tune in at six. Okay, um, we're gonna call the meeting to order. This is the March 1st, uh, 2022 NOAA Guards Commission. And uh, I'm gonna start uh, Mark Allen's chairman uh, here. I'm gonna call the roll call with uh, Nori Gruden. Here. Um, Melissa Matuska. Here. Elizabeth Tardif. Here. And for the record, uh, Stephen uh, Rust is going to be tuning in, uh, but he is running a few minutes late. We'll get started in the meantime. Um, with the absence of a quorum, uh, we're not able to approve the minutes from March 1st. But did, did anybody here have any issues with, the, with those minutes that need to be amended? Melissa, I had no issues. Okay, same, same for myself as well, um, but we will have to wait until next month to approve those minutes. Oh, and um, we'll call for uh, St Stephen Rust uh, for your attendance. He's tuning in now, I see him connecting, stand by. It's fine, Mark. He doesn't have to say he's here. Telesco can see them. It's fine. Okay. Hello. Sorry, I'm late. No, you're, you're fine. Um, so that said, uh, do we have anybody here uh, standing by from the public who wishes to participate? We do have Brad Kerner. He's here to talk to the mural item that's in new business. If we want to attend to that item first, um, it's up to you, Mark, so Brad can leave. So essentially, um, he is looking at the feasibility of installing a mural by Five Fingers on the side of his store that basically goes up the side of the entire property. Um, okay. There was a picture included in the minutes, but he wanted to gather support from the Arts Commission before he goes forward to his condo association to get approval for the installation. Um, right. This would not be a city funded mural. This would be um, privately funded, but as you all know, getting the check in the box um, from the Arts Commission and having that review of you folks is um, best to move it forward. So that's why he's here. And like I said, we could take it now or we can have him wait and it's up to you. I'd like to hear from him now, if, that, if everybody's okay with that. Brad? Hi, Brad. Hi, guys. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. I think the settings are weird, so I don't see myself, but that's fine. I am the owner of Eco Evolution. It's on uh, 135 Washington Street. So if you know where Beadworks is or on yeah. the bead, neighbor of Beadworks and ac uh, directly across the street from Donovan's who also has a very nice mural on the side Ooh. of their restaurant. Um, and then when you're facing my store to the left is the driveway that goes down to Segundo and the spread. Um, and that is a really nice brick wall. There it is. And so mm. I've been thinking about as one of the only, uh, there's a few retailers on the street. I'm brand new. I opened June 1st. I'm an eco-friendly marketplace and an artisan cooperative. We have 50 local artisans represented in the store. And I'm using artisan in the, in the most broadest sense of people who create products as well as fine art for sale. Um, yeah, so we're looking to activate it a little bit. I'm trying to still get the word out. I wouldn't be lying if I was to say it's not tough opening up a retail store in the middle of a pandemic on Washington Street. So mm -hmm. as a creative person, I keep thinking of different ways to activate the area and I've been getting to know Raf and collaborating with him a bit. And I thought he's so well known locally um, and this would just be such a cool, delightful piece of artwork on the side. And so what you see is something he concepted that would work both in the winter, which is what you see without leaves, but also in the summer when the tree's in full bloom, it would look like um, a balloon stuck in the top of this tree, tree and a girl swinging at the bottom. <laughs> and so it kind of works both seasons. Um, this character, he didn't tell me this, but I saw it on his Instagram, is the, is the new character of a book he's working on. 
So, mm -hmm. and then on her t-shirt is my logo. Um, and that's it really. This is something that um, my store and all this apartments above it, as well as three other buildings on the street are associated into a condo association. So they have really the final word and the negotiation with me of, you know, what happens to this mural at end of life, I guess. But um, I thought I'd start with people who are more like-minded, <laughs> supportive first, mm -hmm. which is you guys. Excellent. I love the design. Um, it reminds me of another mural idea that was presented um, further up the street on Washington Street. And it was an interesting, you know, uh, concept because that was also a, a condo building. And from the artist's uh, point of view, it was problematic in a sense of dealing with the condo association because essentially they would have had to get approval from each owner, as it yeah. were. Um, and all it takes is one owner to say, no, I don't like that idea. Um, so nobody has really gone uh, all the way uh, in terms of pursuing this type of project, but I think it's great. Um, um, now, Sweet Dreams, is that the name of your store? It's not. So I haven't talked to him where he came up with that. Maybe it's the name of the book he's coming up with. But my store is Eco Evolution. So at the bottom right, you'll see like that little thing that looks like a picket sign that has like an arrow pointing to people like this is Eco Evolution. Um, mm. And then his love, love more than ever is also at the bottom. But that logo yeah. on her T-shirt is my logo. <laughs> so mm -hmm. uh, the Sweet Dreams, I think, is just something sweet. And, you know, he pro he promotes love and all things sweet so i think that was just him so i actually didn't uh all i did was walk him out to the corner and look at look at this and said just go with it like whatever you whatever you're feeling i had no parameters actually that's an excellent idea um so to to be clear the arts commission doesn't need to approve this for you to be able to do this right um, we have a we have a, a general uh, art policy, but there's no, there's no uh, ordinance restricting murals, especially on private property. So as long as the, all the building owners uh, are on board, um, then uh, there's, there's no real issue. The only, the only issue that there really was at, at one time was when it's a painted sign for a business, then it kind of comes under uh, zoning to uh, because there are restrictions for what they consider you know signage and um, but I, this is not sign direct signage for the business so I don't see that as an issue um, I think it's a it's a pretty design I think uh, we we definitely are familiar with five fingers work Does yeah. anybody I mean, else this have is any not questions? His, this is not his typical style I was when he first showed it to me like oh that's not what I expected but whatever, I, I, I liked it. I like it a lot, actually. Does anybody else have any questions or comments for Brad? I love it. I work right around the corner. Uh, I'd love to see this there. It'd be great. Oh, cool. This is Melissa. I love it, too. Um, I will say, though, that planning and zoning should just maybe take a look at this. Because if I remember correctly, when we were talking with them about what's a mural and what's a sign, people raise the question of if you're a restaurant and you're a pizza restaurant, can you have um, a, a mural with a bunch of people eating pizza? And the answer to that was no, actually you couldn't because that would be promoting the restaurant. So I just want to make sure that we don't have any issues there, but I, I love the design. I think this is, I, I think this is great. I don't have any problems with it, but I, I just want to make sure that they don't either. Fair enough. Okay, that's good. I'm actually going through permitting for my store sign right now, actually. But I, I would probably go through this separately and get that permit first so I can put my actual sign up. Um, they probably won't yeah. have a problem because the t-shirt the is my logo and does say Eco Evolution on a little sign, which we could take. I could take that sign piece away. But I am trying to draw some attention that there's actually like a retail store here to, to all the Walker buys. Well, even just to be just to be clear, when the um, that ordinance with planning and zoning uh, restricting murals doesn't exist anymore, 
Um, oh, okay. But e even when it did, um, you were allowed to have the name of the sponsoring, um, if it was a business, whatever sponsoring thing, it just had to be, it had to be within a certain size. You know, the fact that your business is sponsoring this logo, it's not inappropriate for you to have your, your, yourself represented there. It just couldn't be like the largest thing to become a sign for your business. But I don't see that as an issue here. And I, I don't think that Zoni will have an issue with it as well. Mark, Sabrina, I, do you have any? Yeah, I was just gonna jump in. I would, I totally agree with you. I don't think it's gonna be a problem, but you will have to go through the process if you wanna keep it on there. But I would not start that until your condo association has said yes or no, because I wouldn't want you to do that like work with planning and zoning again to get another sign permit if you don't need to. Um, okay, but yes, I don't think, I don't foresee it being a problem at all. Yeah, I would still take it there because I think it's cute as is. All right, cool. Not just cute, I mean, with, I think my it's with my regular sign, they are 95% approved, except they need me to go through the redevelopment agency because it is the historic street of Washington Street. So yeah not sure what that means for a future of like a mural but yeah yeah it should be okay okay cool yeah very good i'm uh, happy to see this uh in the works all right so maybe i will present it to my condo board there are nine people there's only one that might say no so we're working on him i think i'll send him a free uh gift from my store before he votes <laughs> no. but um you know, everyone else no, is just, very nice and pleasant comes to my store all the time and i know all the people who live upstairs so yeah the other building that was was across the street um uh, where that break is that between the buildings to, close to jaffe um, right audio there's that there's that alleyway and that building above was where people had proposed to do a mural almost very similar very uh, vertical long and um and they had contacted the building association and then were directed to the condo association and there were apparently a ton of owners so i think they they found that process to be daunting and they didn't they ended up going for uh, a place where there were less you know less red tape as it were so yeah but i'm happy to well, see I'm this a, go i'm forward. a marathoner you can get it so, done. yeah Good i have patience you. and i'm a marathoner so i'll stay I'm okay going solely and in it for the long haul. <laughs> so Excellent. let's see, you know, if it doesn't happen, Excellent. it doesn't happen, but I appreciate all your support. Is it okay when I go to my condo association? I just say, look, I presented this to the arts commission. They don't approve or disapprove, but they're in support. Sure. Cool. Sabrina, and, is that, that, is that yep. correct to say that? Exactly. Yeah. And then um, if you want further support, there'll be the minutes of this meeting as well. Um, oh, so once cool. we approve cool. them at the next meeting, you can have those for like your records in case anybody doesn't believe you, which I don't think they won't, but just <laughs> well, you'll have to get quorum at the next meeting to get these minutes approved to end the next one. Correct. <laughs> All right. Well, well thank, thank you, you guys. I really appreciate it. Nice meeting you. And I just love being a retailer in Norwalk. So it's fun to be oh. part of the art scene. And I have a lot of local artists who's selling work in my store. So come and check it out. So just tell me briefly, what's, what's the name of your store and what kind of store is it? Yes, it's the name is Eco, E-C-O, Evolution. Right. And it is a low waste marketplace. So I help people go low waste in their lives. Like there's very little plastic. Um, we try to, everything that comes into my store is shipped without plastic, without a lot of waste. So things for your kitchen, your bathroom, your laundry room, the home decor, jewelry, all that stuff. Um, I also have a little vintage section. So there's a lot of like hand-picked little vintage pieces. And then we also are a local artisan cooperative. So Connecticut-based artisans only, mostly Fairfield County. And they are vending different products, candles, a lot of jewelry. Um, there's a Norwalk your photographer only takes pictures of scenes in Norwalk. And then there are some fine artists. Um, you all might know like Vernice. I am Vernice. She sells her kimono robes in there. So lots of cool artistic stuff. And for me, that fits into my model. Of, like gift giving should be local <laughs> instead of Amazon bought. Like support local artists. It's very eco-friendly actually. And the carbon footprint on the things created in our own state 
is great as well as the economic, you know, benefits. So that's the store. I am, people know me as the eco dude <laughs> online on Instagram. And, um, I was, I'm like a influencer in my own mind. Cause I don't really have that many followers, but I like to influence my friends and neighbors to be a little bit more conscious consumers. And, uh, I guess the only other thing I'll say is I'm part of the great resignation. I had a full-time job at Save the Children for 20 years, and this is part of my COVID journey. I decided to quit and open a retail store in the middle of a pandemic. Wow, that's that's a great story. And um, so thank you so much for all the information. It sounds like a great business. I'm I'm definitely going to come check it out. Cool. Look forward to me. Do you do like gallery openings? Hello? Yep, I hear you. Yes, I was just wondering because we have an Instagram page. So if you have an well, we can also have um, yeah. Michelle friend him as well on yeah. Instagram, I mean, but should... also like if you have a certain artist you want to promote, maybe she can, if she has time, come down and maybe take some pictures or you can send us pictures and we can promote a local artist that's there, right? I would Her? love to do that. I have a bunch of Norwalk artists, so that'd be great. I don't ever call myself a gallery because what ends up happening is no one comes into my store looking for a piece of fine art, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but they come in after dinner and they walk out with a piece of art anywhere from 150 bucks to 4,000. And it just happens. So it's not like no one comes in looking for art. So the 4,000 is just this one artist who makes really great portraits out of license plates. They're fabulous. They're amazing. So, um, yeah, I'd be happy I mean, to do anything, share contacts, and I can help promote some of these local artists. I mean, we have we have our share of galleries in Norwalk, which is which is great, but it's great to have artistic businesses as well. I think it's all yeah. a part of you know a thriving art scene in general. So um, I'm really happy to meet you. You too, guys. Thank you so much. And Sabrina, thank you for hooking me up with this group. Appreciate it. No problem. Happy to have you anytime. And thanks for taking the time. All right, guys. Have a good meeting. Bye. Thanks. Okay, so Bye-bye. we can move on to the uh, committee updates. Um, can I uh, turn it over to Nori Gruden for a budget update? Uh, yes. Um, I was just looking at the budget that the city gave us at the beginning of the year, which was um, June, right? No, July of last year, which was the budget that we requested and not the Martin Luther King budget or the art budget, but um, we've allocated so far $7,817.71. And then from that budget, which was $14,400, we have $6,582.29 left. That's not, um, that's more of like an operating budget for um, Michelle Telesco, doing other projects. It has, it's separate from the Martin Luther King um, development budget. I'm just opening up the other, because there's a few other things that um, we have gotten grants for. So the business development for MLK is a different amount. Then there's um, actually um, art in public places. That's a separate amount. So that doesn't touch our quote, operating expenses budget. I, um, you know, um, Sabrina might want to go into those budgets, which is something that I know Janet is working on with Julio and Brian for infrastructure on those other budgets. Um, but I think I, I, what do you mean with, uh, as far as Janet and Julio, I think we're, I think that yeah. that's so, already Julio's yep. already been paid out, I believe. Yeah, exactly. That those um, when you talk about well, further on in the meeting, talking about uh, the art and public places, that's a, that money comes out of a different budget. Right. So I know, that, I know that uh, Janet won't be here and Brian won't be here, but we have Julio has been paid out completely, so we still have. Um, $9,500 that was reserved for the student project in that capital budget account for the MLK Boulevard Art. Uh, Lauren has also been completely paid as well. So we still have that balance that we can use um, 
for a student project or for anything related to MLK art. So that's still remaining. And then we'll have the $25,000 of the Art in Public Places program money um, that I know Brian Casper had some um, thoughts on, but um, the next meeting when we have a forum, we will be able to expend some of that $9,500 on the lighting installation for the mural. Mm -hmm. um, so that really covers the gamut of the capital fund. So do you foresee the lighting coming out of art and public places or coming out of the MLK? We have money left over in the MLK fund. It would be from the MLK funding. Right. Okay. And I know I did not, speak to Brian. It's Brian not did not. Be, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. It's not going to be a lot of money since we only have to pay for the physical lights themselves and the wiring. They are taking um, the cost of the electricity on for us. So there won't be a reoccurring payment for that. And that's good news. But the installation is uh, paid for by who? Us. We pay, I see, okay. Just... Yeah, so the, the one-time cost of the lighting and the installation and the wiring is gonna be out of that MLK budget. And then the reoccurring cost of electricity is going to be uh, taken on by the WPCA and Eversource. Got it, great, okay. Because uh, yeah, I did speak to, uh, Peter Vitarosa, uh, I guess maybe now about two weeks ago. And the way, I don't know if we're moving off of the agenda, maybe I should wait. Yeah, we can we can wait for that part. Um, okay. Unless you wanna talk about it now and we could just skip over No, it's okay. It. No, no, that makes sense. It, it's quick, but yeah, it just, that's the first I had heard about the way the pricing or the, the cost would be divvied up. So, uh, I don't know. I, I maybe I was hoping that maybe this lighting was going to be paid for out of a different budget, but I don't know if that's uh, open for negotiation at this point. Um, yeah. Yeah, um, I think that's to be determined. Okay. But uh, I, th I think the idea was that it was because this was related to the MLK artwork that it would come out of that budget. Okay. That was at least the plan as far as I, was, I know. Um, but we can, yeah, we can, we can move on from that for, we can come back to that because sure. we can move out okay. of. Uh, um, <clears throat> Sabrina, I was going to say, Nori, why don't we also plan to have a separate budget committee meeting. We haven't had one this year. And I think it would be good um, to sort of like assess everything. Uh, uh, Sabrina, do, is, okay. regarding the budget, um, and this is more related to communications, but you had said at one time that you thought that there, there might, the social media might get undertaken by within your staff and we wouldn't use Michelle at that point. Is there any uh, movement on that or any news there? My computer is acting super funny, but um, we do not have any update on that as of right now. The request um, with Michelle's amount is still in the budget at this point in time. Um, should it be moved, um, we can do an internal transfer and use the funds for Michelle elsewhere. Um, but at this point, um, there's no real update on that just because the price might be a little um, too high. Um, yeah. But I'm working with them and we're going to have a more comprehensive contract come July 1 with the marketing firm that we use. So if that happens, mm -hmm. um, rolling that all into the new contract would be the option and then we would free up that money. But at this point, we're covered either way. Okay. And so the, the money that's uh, covering Michelle to the end of the fiscal year, that's about 6000 Exactly. Okay. And from that operating budget, you said we have total about 9,000 now? Is that what you said, Nori? Um, to, we have about what's left from our operating budget after we paid everything as of, I think, last month is $6,582.29. So that should- That's 6,000 after, after, after Michelle's money for the year is taken out or 6,000 including that, that money? That's including that money. That's what's left to okay. pay her out from 
what's today, March? So three more yeah. months. So, and um, okay. Sabrina, is it use it or lose it? Or can some of this money roll over? It's most likely gonna be use it or lose it for the operating. So yeah, we should have, maybe we can, um, we should do a budget thing because um, maybe we can use that money to do a, an art project if we have it. Or give it to yeah. Brian, yeah, or move it over for Brian's, um, if he has any ideas that help pay a little bit more of it. Yeah, yeah, especially where we're talking later on in a thing we're gonna be talking about, uh, the city, city Hall Art Gallery proposal, you know, we haven't done anything with the mayor's gallery since we did fire department uh, exhibit, you know, three years ago. And with hopefully City Hall reopening now. And, um, you know, I, I'd like to see us, you know, put some energy there and hopefully some money. And uh, at some point we're gonna, uh, years ago we had approved the new uh, money for the new hanging system for art in the People's Gallery. We don't know where the People's Gallery is going to be. Uh, that was still to be determined pre-pandemic. So um, at some point, we'll hopefully be able to get into that as well. Um, okay, thank you very much, uh, Nori. I appreciate it. Um, on the communication side, uh, there really isn't anything to report. Um, I have We haven't done a newsletter since the MLK project was unveiled. Um, I'd like to get a new one out for the spring. Uh, I know we basically talked about doing one every other month. So um, I think coming into um, March, April, that would be the plan is to have a, a new newsletter. Um, but social media wise, I really don't have anything new to report. Um, but, uh, you know, ho hopefully uh, I'll have more for you in the next meeting. Um, for infrastructure, um, Brian, I spoke to Brian briefly. He didn't have anything new. He was not able to launch a new meeting. He is planning on launching a meeting. Um, he does want to start moving forward on the art and public places. And uh, he has some ideas there, but uh, nothing that I can really discuss and talk about because I don't know fully what his ideas are. Um, but hopefully he'll have a proposal soon. I have um, a little bit of an update. Um, so, we have solicited some of the redevelopment agency staff to assist us with the underpass project. Okay. Uh, so it'll be super helpful for that, as well as David Shockley helping out on that, because we originally did not have the capacity when it was just me and Brian kind of working through the state process. So we have additional staff to help us out with that now as well. So that would that that would mean that redevelopment will then be on board with this idea. I mean, it's not a foregone conclusion, right? But um, it's not a foregone conclusion, it would have to go through, you know, a larger review process through them. But yes, we will have staff to help us with the actual application process and stuff like that. Okay, that's good news. Um, awesome. Um, so, uh, Steve, we could kick it back to you for uh, your update on the MLK lighting. And, and then uh, I'm interested to hear if has a vendor been chosen for this yet? Um, when you say you mean uh, an installer? Yeah, I know that we, our, our budget is going to pay for. Uh, oh, the chair would like to recognize Janet Evelyn, who's just joined us. Thank you, Janet. You're welcome. I'm here. Thank, Hello. thank you for tuning in. I appreciate that. And uh, we're speaking to Stephen Russ now for an update on the MLK lighting uh, proposal. Sure. Okay, thanks, Mark. So uh, thanks to everybody, uh, Sabrina and everyone for uh, the contacts and uh, the long list of folks <laughs> that had involvement in this. And we, we ended up, uh, I think, the last person I spoke to was uh, Pete Verderosa. I think he works for Suez. And they are the people, I believe, who uh, will deal with the installation through one of their contractors. Uh, and the way that Pete and I left it was that uh, I really wanted to test. I want to buy one sample light uh, and find a way to plug it in. So I asked him if at some point we could get a hand from someone there 
to help us just plug in one light and uh, you know an extension cord running through the door or whatever it is and uh, uh, test out that one light along with uh, everybody just to see if the color temperature is right, proof of concept, all of that. Uh, also talk through you know how they're going to uh, punch through the wall. They've, they're going to have to drill some holes through the wall of the building and uh, all of that. So the first thing is a little bit more research. Uh, the cost of one light is less than $150. So the first thing, I, I guess I'd like to ask uh, for approval of that to go out and buy a sample and some parts and pieces and move ahead with that sample and get uh, get Laura in there if uh, if she's available and interested. I think she is. I've mentioned this to her a while ago, but uh, that we could actually you know take a look at the fixture, make sure the color is right, uh, all of that. So uh, I don't know if that has to be voted on, but I'd like to. Uh, be able to buy that sample for $150 or not to exceed $150. I think it'll be less. Uh, and I guess I'd get reimbursed. Is that how it would work? Um, Steve, if you could just send me like the link or wherever you would um, order it from, and I could just use my P card for it. And to clarify, right. we don't need approval to spend that amount of money. So it's fine if you just go and do that. We can also mm -hmm. reimburse you, but we would like need a W-9. It's easier if I just use my card to do it. Sure. Sounds great. Okay, thanks. I'll send that uh, later this evening. And uh, uh, so once we have that sample, uh, it probably will take a few weeks to get it delivered. Uh, hopefully not much more. And then uh, just give uh, Suez uh, some notification when we'd like to come in. And I guess we'd open that up. Uh, I'd notify everybody on the committee, I guess everybody would be welcome to come if anybody wants to check it out. Uh, but, you know, obviously it's critical that Lauren would be there. Well, Stephen, if I could, if, if I can help through the community, I mean, the communications aspect, if I can help to facilitate, um, whether it's contacting Lauren or Jan, Janet, I think could probably be of assistance there as well. Um, right. Please let us know how we can help. Okay. Thanks. The question is, uh, Sabrina, I have for you is, um, um, we at this point with Jen here, do we have a quorum at this point or we don't? We don't, we still needed Heidi Alterman. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Okay, um, so in terms of, we're okay though, we can purchase this light out of your, out of your budget uh, through your card and then, uh, and then the in time, yeah, and then the Arts Commission budget just reimburses it. Because of the amount, it doesn't need to be approved by the commission. It's fine. But by the time the two or three weeks rolls by and we get this test done, and assuming that we feel good and want to go forward, then we would then vote to approve the overall budget, not to exceed $5,000 for the next meeting. Is that correct? Exactly. Okay. So can I uh, ask about that? Um that allocation is this should be it's going to be cheaper but i wanted to put the five thousand dollars in because that's okay. the cap and i didn't want to i didn't want to have to come back if we said we need exactly 350 dollars and then we spent 357 dollars so <laughs> i just wanted to make sure we had the amount i see okay great um uh, and yeah it i i somehow thought that we might have a little bit more control over the uh, contractor. Uh, in this case, I don't think it is a problem. It's very simple work, uh, but I do wanna make sure the contractor buys the stuff that we want them to buy, right? We'll test this light out. I don't want them to substitute and buy some other light, right? So mm -hmm. um, sometimes, uh, you know, contractors will let uh, the owner or uh, buy the fixtures and hand them over to the contractor. Uh, you know, sometimes they're uh, not happy with that because they lose the markup, but uh, it's the safest way to make sure we get the light fixture we want uh, so that somebody doesn't substitute it. There's only four lights here. It's not that big a deal, but uh, I just, again, I thought we'd have a little bit more control over the contractor. Uh, I'm sure the Suez contractor will be fine. I just would like to be able to set up 
a time to meet with them and maybe we can do that all in one shot as part of the the sample test and all of that so uh, mm. that's basically that's it i think at this point so the, the interesting thing for me is and I'm, um this is something we always talk about uh sabrina and i is establishing a process that we can repeat other times in the future so i feel like this is kind of like a test case for us mm -hmm. and um i think it's a it's something that my speaking just for myself uh, something i would like to see you know uh, as become a part of uh future art installations where we always take into account the lighting and how it, the art is presented that's great uh, i think it's a really great thing but i would think it would be good if we, you know in this case you were using the contractor that's uh suez is pr providing is that right so we that, need to use their contractor that services their facilities i, I see so okay. if if it's another project like if we had an underpass mural that we were lighting that's when we would have to you know bid out and and get multiple folks who would provide that mm -hmm. service but because they are the sole person who services those stations. That's why we have to use them. Sure. Is there, uh, Sabrina, when uh, there is another project like that, for example, if there was a, uh, you know, the, uh, a project that would be bid out, are there uh, a pool of contractors that the city hall has sort of pre-approved or does it just go general? Anyone can bid on it. We have a list, but anyone can bid on it. So we have a list of contractors that um, have you, have, we have submitted something to us in the past. So mm -hmm. we'll send them kind of that bid information, but any, it's open to anybody. Got it. Okay. Thanks. Excellent. Um, just on an infrastructure level, um, just to follow up from the end of, uh, from the end of the last meeting, uh, one of the things that uh, Janet and I discussed post uh, after we had decided not to move forward with uh, Julio for his student uh, art project. Um, one of the things we talked about was um, trying to uh, trying to do the traffic graphic box propose, you know, trying to get create new traffic graphic box projects where we are still able to involve students from that area, uh, the MLK corridor, and and hopefully have um, uh, like a sponsoring party, whether it's a, a, a local business or a local artist, et cetera. Um, this is something we've, we've discussed. It's something we've said that this is what we'd like to do. Um, so far, I've been putting out the feelers with a couple of different art studios. Um, I had reached out to the uh, uh, the Wilson Artist Loft, and I had not heard back from them. Janet, did you know anybody from uh, from that organization? Um, no, I did know one lady, and she's uh, since moved to Florida. Um, hmm. That had a studio there, but no, I'm not off the top of my head right now. I don't. I, I don't know anyone there. Jenna, I know that, yeah, um, go ahead. I mean, I've, I've, been, I've been there on a couple of occasions in the past and, um, you know, I've met artists. I, I have a Rolodex that has some contacts on them, but I would have to kind of go back and, you know, kind of uh, relook at, you know, the contacts and, and see who I could approach, but I don't have one readily available at this time. Mark, I think I do have, um, I know actually several people that, that are there, so I might be able to get you one. It would be interesting to, if we could find, you know, whether it's through that, that organization or through one of the artists to sort of uh, take on curating one of these boxes in the MLK corridor and then to involve local students. I think it would it would check all the boxes that we wanted to check with the, uh, the student art proposal. Um, the good thing is that uh, David Shockley's budget, it already has money allocated for this artwork. So it doesn't have to come out of the MLK money, which is great. Um, but uh, if we could do that, uh, you know, 
go through David Shockley's program, but still check these other boxes. I think it's a win-win. Right. And I think we had also talked about, um, you know, considering maybe another mural someplace else within the corridor that we could consider for that budget amount. You know, I think it was sure. about $13,000 or something like that, if, I'm, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So, um, we currently have uh, $9,500 left. Okay. Right. So it's assuming that uh, we know that the lighting is not going to take, you know, all of the 5,000, you know, we will still have money left over. And we do have money from art and public places, so we could conceivably create a new mural in the MLK corridor. And I, I, I think that would be great to get a third piece uh, out of this. Um, Janet, how do you feel about this? Um, how do you feel if another organization wanted to curate one of these boxes and would work with local students in the corridor, but if the organization itself wasn't in the corridor? How do you, do you, do you feel like that would still be a win? Um, yeah, no, absolutely. I don't think that there was any stipulation that the curator or project manager had to be within the corridor. Um, I think we just chose Julio because, you know, he had worked on some projects, um, you know, in the corridor in the past, but I don't think that there was a, I think, I think it was more the stipulation or the, the, the consideration was that, um, you know, we sourced and we networked and really um, may prioritize working with artists within the, that were Re represented the corridor or, you know, or that were aligned with the corridor, you know, with mm -hmm. regards to um, who would, uh, who, you know, the, the various artists that would submit to the job. And, you know, what we had in what we had, we had a, an array of that variety of artists that they were all not in the corridor. As we all know, Lauren is from Stanford. But um, I think that what was, you know, the, the, the main important aspect was that, you know, we focused on, um, you know, emphasizing or uh, spotlighting um, minority artists, you know, um, that would, that was more representative of the population that was in the corridor. Mm. Yeah, I, I definitely, I, I definitely concur with what you're saying. Did anyone else have any insight or opinions there? Well, good. I, I, we see eye to eye, and I'm, uh, we're just going to continue uh, our outreach. And uh, I'd like to see some new traffic boxes get painted, and I'd like to see them get painted in the corridor. And I would love to see a new mural happen. I think that would be great for the community. Right. So, I mean, uh, have we, I mean, completed, uh, who, at this point, Julio has completed his requirements for, for um, the project? I mean, uh, you know, he's no longer working, we don't have to, or is he still part of, um, is it completed is my question. It's yes, at this point. At this point, his work is completed, and he has been—he's been fully paid uh, everything that he is owed. So right. at this point, uh, we are free to work with him, but we're free not to work with him as well. Right. That was the question. Yep. Um, Sabrina, do you um, coming to the end of the infrastructure committee uh, uh, update? Um, do you want to? Uh, talk to us about the uh, the City Hall gallery proposal? Sure. So um, Jess and I were reviewing some other City Hall galleries um, in different cities throughout the country. Um, and we had stumbled across the Austin, Texas People's Gallery. So as we all know, the city of Norwalk has a People's Gallery. It's on the first floor. Well, it was on the first floor. I'm not sure where they moved it at this point because the um, like uh, honor wall stuff is now there. Um, mm. However, we have a significant amount of space in City Hall 
on the second floor and on the first floor. And if you were to walk up to the third floor, you'd see all the student artwork that's displayed there almost on every inch of every wall, <laughs> including um, not only in the hallways, but there's also the opportunity within meeting rooms and offices, things of that nature where people um, actually you know, come to a lot. For example, like a tax collector's office or the um, town clerk's office or the mayor's office, stuff like that. Um, so what the city of Austin does is at the beginning of each fiscal year, they do a call for artists. Um, those artists then are placed in certain locations throughout city hall. They're aware of this location. There's a QR code that's accompanied with each piece. And if somebody within the community wants to purchase one of the pieces, they can scan the QR code and the payment goes directly to the artist. And it would be curated through um, like a department similar to mine for the sale so that they would be able to take the piece home. And then at the end of the fiscal year, the city reserves a certain amount of funding through the Arts Commission to actually purchase one of the pieces that didn't get sold, but the public actually votes on which piece they want to add to the city's art collection out of the remaining pieces. So what happens is essentially the walls of City Hall become an art gallery in, to in totality where people can buy and purchase pieces. And then at the end of that, there's, you know, however amount we see fit, whether that be, you know, $5,000, $1,000, whatever that ends up being, um, the public then votes on what pieces are remaining at the end of the fiscal year. And then we purchase one to own as, you know, part of our public art collection. So it was really cool. And I think it's definitely something we can execute with not a lot of manpower. Um, the only hiccup that I would see is building and facilities management being not so happy about a bunch of things being put on the walls. Um, but yeah. I'm happy to do that legwork if that's something that we want to do. And also, I know we had spoken about doing kind of like those cork board uh, rails throughout City Hall so that we can hang more art than is currently there without, you know, making a bunch of holes in every single wall. Um, but I think there's ways around it too. you know, we could do foam board, we could do command strip, we can do all this fun stuff. So I think there's definitely potential there to work with them, but I think it would be a really cool like project, not only for City Hall, but maybe some other locations. And then mm. we could potentially, um, you know, add to our public art collection every year, which would be really great. I have a question. Um, Pre-pandemic, like as I said earlier, pre-pandemic, we had voted on money for a, a hanging system for uh, the People's Gallery. We yeah. didn't move for forward on it at the time because of the construction that was going on and the, and the idea that People's Gallery would be moving. Does, do we, can you find out if, if that, was, was that money then, we voted on spending that money, but I don't know if it was ever, was it ever moved to a different fund or how did that, what happened to that money? there's a high chance that finance and budgets took it back because there was no formal contract in place to spend the funds. I, um, I, I can look into it though and try to follow the, the money and see what happened. Um, but every year, essentially what happens is the CFO takes the operating budgets and anything that we haven't spent that doesn't actually have a physical signed contract associated with it, they pretty much take the money back and it goes to the general fund. Would you foresee um, this idea requiring like to be a part of the new fiscal budget post July? Uh, or do you, um, I think do you have some flexibility in the ARP funds to start up something like this, especially if the amount we approve to spend is, you know, under $10,000. What is ARP? Uh, the American Rescue Plan Act funds. Oh, right. I was thinking AARP, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we have some flexibility built into there. Um, obviously there's some super important projects going on like um, business grants and street infrastructure and things like that. But there is a certain amount reserved for art. And if we take, you know, a small, small, small portion of that to kick something like this off, I think it could be really great. 
Yeah, because I think that if we have that hanging system where then it becomes less problematic dealing with the physical hanging of art is actually a lot of work. Yeah. You know, and especially when you're dealing with artists with different types of materials, different sizes of materials, um, that hanging system solves a lot of problems. Um, yeah. And I think it would. I think that's also a question for the building and facilities management folks, what they would support installing and what they mm -hmm. would think is best. I'm sure they have some type of idea. Um, and then we could also just go from there. We could suggest to them, you know, this was what we were thinking. And then if they go, absolutely not, then, you know, what are, what are you thinking? What's the, <laughs> what's the solution here? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. I, any chance that the, that the, that infrastructural costs could come out of the facilities budget? It or is might. that just asking too much? Yeah, no, it might. I can have a chat with them about it. I'm not sure. I mean, I also have some funding in my budget that I won't be spending this year because the pandemic, every year we ask for, you know, funding to go places like conferences, but nothing's really happening that's in person right now so I have some flexible spending money as well in my budget that's going to be given back if I don't spend it um yeah. so there's some flexibility there as well considering this isn't like a super super high ticket item but I can have the conversation with them um and see what they would propose we use and what they're comfortable with and then we can go from there but I wanted to get your guys thoughts on it before I did all of that cool Cool. Uh, I'm definitely going to look up uh, what they're doing in Austin. Um, I think that's great. Anybody else have any questions or thoughts? I like the idea because that's what we wanted to do with the People's Gallery is have community artwork in there. So it's great that, that you know we can promote local businesses too, and local artists to help the economy as well. Absolutely. All right, and then uh, Sabrina. Um, so, where where are we now with City Hall as far as it being open? And do we do we feel like we're at a a place where we want to um, revisit the Mayor's Gallery? Um, do we is there is there traffic there now that we want to uh, you know take a look at that? We haven't done anything there in quite some time. I would say it definitely needs a refresh. There's not, you know, hundreds of people going to the mayor's office, but there are significant amounts of people and it's been the same, you know, for the last, what has it been now? Three years almost? <laughs> Two years? It, three years? It, at least three years, yeah. So I definitely think we can do a refresh. And if this is, you know, if we want to do a more generalized call for artists and see what we get, um, there's that potential as well. It's just what we want to do. Do we have a specific topic we want to do? We can put out a call for that. We can, you know, mm -hmm. it's really yeah. up to us how we want to handle it. So okay. All right. So we'll we'll table that for next month. I, I definitely gonna talk to Brian and talk to everybody offline and see what ideas we come up with. Um any other old business that I missed? Take that as a no. Um, okay. Uh, any, anything from anyone else before we move to adjournment? All right. Janet, thank you again for, for, for coming in. I know that it was not easy for you today, but I really appreciate it. Um, do we have a motion for adjournment? A motion for adjournment. This is Melissa, I second. Who is the first, please? Elizabeth Tarter. Okay. So then uh, I'll start with myself, Mark Allen, voting aye for adjournment. Uh, Elizabeth, you're an aye. I assume this is your motion. Um, uh, Stephen Rust. Uh, Steve Rust, voting aye. Janet Evelyn. Aye. Uh, Melissa. Aye. Uh, Noria Gruden. Aye. All right. The eyes have it. Thank you so much, everybody.
Um, I'll follow up with you offline and uh, have a great month. And uh, I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Thanks, everybody. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Sabrina. And thank you, Telesco.